Even broadcasting a black and white image requires complex 30 fields of 262 and a half lines each interlaced to form a 525 line frame. So sending a full color image can be almost an impossible mission. Many trials were made, some of them very interesting, but the greatest problem was the incompatibility with the existing black and white system. Whoever had a black and white receiver at home could not tune in to the new color broadcasts, not even watch them in black and white. If someone bought one of the new color televisions, they would not be able to watch the normal black and white broadcasts. All components for image transmission and reception would have to be completely redesigned. Huge projection systems and wideband channels to accommodate new transmissions were needed. Both transmitting and receiving antennas would have to be reinvented. It was necessary to come up with a system that could use existing channels to carry out color broadcasting by squeezing information into a black and white channel. A normal black and white channel uses a 6 MHz band. The video carrier must be fit into that space. The upper side band goes up to about 4 MHz above the video carrier. The lower side band is attenuated and remains vestigial. Within the 4 MHz of the upper side band of the video carrier, all the black and white information of the image is included, called LUMA, with its corresponding sync signals for both the horizontal and vertical scanning. A little bit higher is the sound carrier, FM, at 4.5 MHz above the video carrier. In order to broadcast the information required to get color pictures, you must include additional signal, called chroma. In order to make the explanation easier, we will start by saying that white light it's a mixture of three primary colors, 30% red, 59% green, and 11% blue. The camera used for color television has three black and white image capturing devices. The first one has a red filter, the second a green filter, and the third a blue filter. Each device can capture black and white pictures only. The first device delivers a signal in which red objects shine brighter. The second delivers a signal in which green objects shine brighter. Finally, the third device delivers a signal in which blue objects shine brighter. These three signals are mixed in a resistor matrix, which delivers an output containing 30% of the voltage of the red sensor, 59% of the voltage of the green sensor, and finally, 11% of the blue sensor. This signal from the resistor matrix is called a Y signal, and it's exactly the same as the normal black and white white signal. So, the resulting channel can be perfectly accepted by a black and white television. On the other hand, the three original signals from the device are used to obtain two additional signals, called the I and Q, subtracting the voltages for red and blue from the Y signal. The I signal is in phase, and the Q signal is in quadrature. These signals are used to phase and amplitude modulate a special 3.58 MHz transmitter. This is the chroma signal. This circuit is what is called a balanced modulator, which delivers an output signal only when the I and Q signals are present. In other words, when there is no color object in front of the camera, the output of the circuit is zero, as in the case of a black and white object. The 3.58 signal phase determines the hue, red, green, magenta, yellow, etc. The amplitude of the signal indicates the intensity or saturation of the color. The picture tube has four inputs, one for red, one for green, one for blue, and one for black and white. If you get a signal at the red input, the screen glows red. If you get a signal in the red and green inputs, the screen glows yellow. If you get a signal at the red and blue inputs, the screen glows magenta. If the picture tube gets a signal in the fourth input only, the screen glows white or gray. Image resolution, that is, the ability to clearly show detail, remains the same as that used for black and white, with a 4 MHz video band. Color resolution is much lower, at just 1 
one half megahertz. In this way, the image that is produced on the screen has the details of the fine texture of the objects in black and white, while the color is superimposed in the form of large areas. I hope this video has been useful to you. The explanation has been oversimplified, given the complexity of the subject. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Chava Tarin.